In this video, we're going to take a look at hot backups on an Oracle database, but we're going to take some time before we start getting into the actual syntax of the commands just to do a little drawing here so you can understand exactly what's going on. Oracle is made up of a whole bunch of different data files, and these data files are grouped into these structures called table spaces. So we got this thing called a table space. And a table space is just a logical representation of one or more data files. So this is data file one, data file two, data file three. Table space can have as few as one data file. It could have as many as, I think the upper limit is something like 1,024. In uh, newer versions of Oracle, it's even higher than that. So one table space is a one-to-many relationship here. We've got a one-to-n relationship with the actual data files that go along with the table space. And why is this important to know? Well, when we do a hot backup, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to take each one of our table spaces offline. As the table space is offline, we can then back up the data files that are associated with that table space. Like I said, there may be one data file, there may be a whole bunch of data files that are associated with the table space. Once we finish backing up the data, uh, the data files associated with the table space, we put the table space um, back online again. How can Oracle do this? There has to be some kind of trick, right? So when the table space is offline and we're backing up the data files, there still could be transactions in the database, right? There still could be transactions, people running transactions against the system against these data files. But I've already said I'm taking these data files offline and I'm backing them up. How does Oracle work this magic? Because these transactions have to go somewhere, right? Well, the database has to be in something called archive log mode. And what archive log mode is, it takes the online redo logs, and there's usually three of these guys. Sometimes there's more. There has to be a minimum of two. But let's say for this example, we have three online redo logs. And the transactions go into these online redo logs. And they're written too cyclically. So file one fills up, it goes to file two. Once that fills up, it goes to file three. Once that fills up, it goes back to file one again. If I was not in archive log mode, I would just be re overwriting these files over and over again. But once I am in archive log mode, what Oracle does is every time we were writing all these different transactions that are out there, once I fill up file one and I move to file two, the archiver takes this uh, online redo log and writes it out to an archive log directory. So it takes this and it makes a copy of this file. So I have this permanent record of all the transactions that are going on in my system, right? All the transactions going here, going here, going here, and everything like that. So when I'm offline, none of the transactions that would normally go to these data files are actually being written there. They can't, right? Because we said these files are offline. But they are being written to the online redo logs, and they are being written to the archive log directory, since we're in archive log mode. Once I take this table space off uh, online, once I bring it online again, I'm finished doing all my backups, Oracle is smart enough to say, hey, I missed a whole bunch of transactions here. Maybe it took me an hour to back up these data files. For that hour, there's a whole bunch of transactions going on against my database that I missed. I wasn't able to write here. So the archiver is smart enough to say, you know what, I need to start looking in the archive log directory for all the transactions that would potentially go against these data files, and I'm going to catch up. And I'm going to do this behind the scenes. Or You don't have to do anything as a DBA. You don't have to worry about, okay, i got to run this command or do this command to make this happen. This happens automatically. So as soon as I finish my backup and I bring these data files online again, the archiver is smart enough to say, hey, these guys are out of sync with the rest of my database. I'm going to go to the archiver, start grabbing all the transactions and writing them out to the data files again. So this is how Oracle works its magic, by giving you a way to say, I'm going to keep the database up and running. I'm going to keep doing transactions. And even when I take uh, certain data files offline, I'm not going to lose any of the transactions. I'm going to keep them all there. But like I said, the key to this is that you have to be in archive log mode in order to do hot backups on your database. This is the only way the magic happens. So I'm going to hop into SQL Plus now. Or I'm sorry, SQL Developer. And I'm going to start looking at 
the different commands I need to run. So the first thing I want to run, just to make sure that my database is in fact in archive log mode, is this command called archive log list. So I'm going to run this guy here, and you can see it prints back the information for me. It says the database log mode is in fact in archive log mode. My automatic archival is enabled. So I am running actively in archive log mode right now. So I can do hot backups. If either one of those was not set to, this, to the values that you see there, you can't do hot backups. Now if I want to check to see where the files are actually being written out, I can take a look at this parameter file, uh, this uh, value inside my init.ora, and to look at the values in the init.ora, I can look at v$parameter. If I run this command now, one of the uh, uh, values that comes back is this thing called log archive destination one. I can have multiple destinations. When I'm writing these files out to an archive log destination here. I'm not limited to just one location. I can write these out to four or five or six or ten different locations if I was really paranoid as a DBA if I want to have backup copies of these all over the place. I can certainly do that. The way my database is set up right now, I'm only going to write it to one location. And that location is C Arch Mini. If I want to take a look at that directory, if I go to C Arch Mini, you can see here, here's a whole bunch of archive logs that have been written out. Last one was written out, um, I'm doing this video on December 6, 2011. Last one was written out 11.22. You can't see the clock in the corner of my uh, computer right now, but right now it says 11.31. We can force a, a switch of the archive logs just to make sure this process is working. So I'm going to go back into SQL Developer here, and I'm going to issue this command, this alter system switch log file. So I'm going to go down here, I'm going to run that guy, and you can see system switch altered, and the clock on my system still says 1131. So now if I go back to that directory, you can see a new file has been created, and there's the timestamp, December 6th at 1131. I scroll over, and that's the name I gave my archiver. So my whole archive process is working properly, so I know I can do hot backups. Once I have all of that done, I now need to figure out, okay, which data files go with which table spaces. Remember we said we can have a one-to-one -one or a one-to-many relationship between our table spaces and data files. i got to figure this out. One of the real nice things a SQL developer is you can go in and you can view the DBA window here, and I can look at my DBA window here, and I need to add a connection here. I'm going to add my mini database. Take a look at that here. And uh, if I take a look at storage, I can see the different table spaces that are out there. If I click on table spaces, you can see I have six table spaces in this particular uh, database. And if I want to see information about each one of those, I click on each one individually. Example. So if I click on data files, I can see here this particular table space, example, has one data file associated with it. SysAUX has one data file associated with it, and it gives me the, the location there. Users has one data file associated with it also. Now, that's not always the case. Like I said, you can have multiple data files associated with a particular table space. And just for fun, I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to add another data file. So I'm going to... Let's see, set my Oracle SID to mini, and then log in. And I'm going to say alter uh, table space users add data file. And I have to specify the file name here, so it's going to be C colon Oracle DB Aura data mini and I'll call this one users02.dbf and I'll give it a size of 100 megs. So Oracle will go out there. Altered table space, there's now two data files that are associated with this particular um, table space. If I refresh my information there, look at that, two, t two data files. There's users01, users02. So now I want to start doing a hot backup. How do I do it? Well, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to recur sequ sequentially go through each one of these table spaces, take it offline, back up the data files that are associated with that table space, bring it online again. Right? What's a real nice thing about this is that you can automate this process. You can put this in a script. As long as you don't add data files or remove data files, or if you do that, you're going to have to change your script, obviously. 
But once you do that, you can just put this in a script, have the script run automatically, and do all of the magic for you without having any kind of interaction whatsoever. But let's go through the manual process just to see what it looks like. So I'm going to keep this DOS window open here, and I'm logged in as a sys user. So what do I want to do? I want to back up my user's uh, table, uh, table space. What's the first thing I do? Well, I'm going to say alter table space users begin backup. Table space altered. Table space is now offline. Those data files are, in effect, closed down. I can run transactions against the database, but nothing is going to get written to those data files. I know which data files make up my user's table space, right? They're in C, Oracle, DB, or Data Mini, Users 01, Users 02. Now I'm free. I can go through and actually back up those data files. So let's go into Oracle, DB, uh, or Data Mini, Users 01, Users 02. Both of those guys are offline now. So I can feel safe about grabbing those guys and saying, you know what, I want to do a backup. So I'm going to copy. You would never put files that are part of a backup on the same disk drive, obviously. I'm just doing this for um, illustrative purposes. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to, going to create a new folder. And I'll call this uh, mini backup. Paste those guys there. There's my users 01. There's my users 02. OK, I've successfully um, backed up those files. So what's the next command I do? Well, if I'm beginning backup with the command begin backup, it makes sense that I would say end backup, table space altered. So I've just done a hot backup, not of my entire database, but of that one table space, user's table space. I've done that without having to shut down my database while transactions were still going on in my database. My database is just sitting there. It's not really doing anything. And those data files are really small. In really large databases where you have tons of data files that are associated with a table space, they could be really huge data files that you have to move to a tape device or you have to pump over a network to some other backup location. It could take a significant time to do that. We were able to do this pretty quickly. That's not a full backup backup of my database. I've just backed up one of the table spaces. The only way I get a true backup of a hot backup of my database is for me to go through each one of these individually and make sure that I have e all of the data files that are backed up. You don't have to back up data files that aren't used very often. I might have a table space with real static data. I might have a data warehouse that I only refresh once a month. Is that a requirement for me to back up that data file over or those data files that are associated with that data warehousing table space over and over again? No, I don't have to do that. They haven't been refreshed for you know the last 30 days. Maybe I did a backup 20 days ago. Nothing's really happened inside those data files, right? They're just kind of sitting there. They're being read a lot, but there's no transactions that are going through that are updating or inserting any information to those data files. So I don't have to do a hot backup on those files. When it comes time for me to recover my database, I can simply, uh, if, I, if I lose those data files for whatever reason, I can restore those data files and then start applying all of the archive redo logs, and Oracle will restore those uh, data files for me automatically. The longer I wait between backups, the more recovery time I'm going to have. So let's say users has a tremendous amount of transactions going against it, right? If I do a backup once a month and my database fails for whatever reason, I'm going to have to apply a month's worth of archive logs to recover my database. That could take a significant amount of time. If you have thousands and thousands of archive logs over the course of a 30-day period, uh, that's probably not a realistic recovery strategy. If I'm backing up that particular data file of, with that table space on a daily basis and my database crashes, all I have to do is recover the archive logs for the last day. Right? I recover the files from yesterday, I put them in place, then I start applying my archive redo logs uh, for a 24-hour period, I can recover my database pretty quickly. So it makes sense for you to look at the transactional volumes that are going through your, your table spaces and making sure you're backing up the files on a regular basis. Again, once I've completed all my data files, I just make sure that uh, all my um, uh, table spaces are, in fact, online. And again, we can put this in a script. It's real easy to put it in a script that just says, alter database, begin backup. 
uh, hop on to the operating system level, copy the files over that are associated with the table spaces, alter table space, and back up. Go to the next table space and just do that over and over again. Again, the thing you have to really worry about is making sure that script stays up to date. You make any kind of change inside your database, you have to make sure that you go through inside that script and make sure the changes are there also. But this is a real simple way of, of uh, doing backups on your Oracle database without having any kind of downtime whatsoever.